everyone, we are back again with another video, but this one isn't exactly a critique video. This is actually a bolstering of someone else's video, Colt Milton. Some of you in the space may already know who Colt is. He is a keto carnivore health influencer and bodybuilder himself, and he has this new format on his Instagram page that is quite comical, very entertaining, where he critiques other people. So I would like to actually feature some people on the channel once in a while that I agree with, and we'll go ahead and once again concur or actually add on to things that he said. So, in this video, I'm also going to be referencing and replying to someone else's comment, particularly one by Jennifer TX Carnivore. So if you're watching Jennifer, you've made it to the channel. It was a lengthy comment. I thought that a video reply would be warranted, so stay tuned for that as well. But first, please subscribe to the Patreon. There is a $1 a month tier, a $5 a month tier, and an $8 a month tier to gain access to one week early uploads, three videos per week instead of two, ad-free content, uncensored content, and access to to all on-screen references. The ones that I cite on the screen on YouTube are blurred. For now, I think eventually I will change that, but only when people start subscribing to the Patreon in higher numbers. With that being said, let's jump right into this. Do you know why people lose weight when they do keto? They're yes, I do know why. However, it depends on what you mean by keto, because keto can also be plant-based keto, and that's not indicated for human physiology, because plants are not indicated for human physiology. They're, in fact, contraindicated. Binge my channel if you want to find out more about why. The reason why is actually, whenever it's a properly tenured, properly fortified carnivorous diet, which is inherently ketogenic, is because of its effects on your hormonal and endocrine system primarily. There are other reasons why as well. The omission and the elimination of other plant toxins that interfere with hormones has a part to play, particularly wheat germagglutin and electin found in wheat, has a propensity to bind onto insulin receptors within the body and never let go either, upregulating its activity. That's one thing. So it still actually ties right back into endocrine system balance. But also water weight because of a lack of carbohydrates, which are inherently inflammatory, and also just an overall lack of inflammation from other inflammatory plant compounds such as oxalates, really oxalic acid found in plants. So yes, I do know why. But what do you have to say? in a calorie deficit. No, you cannot be in a calorie deficit unless you are in a hypothermic event because calories are units of heat energy, informally speaking. I say informally because you can't actually measure energy. So to be informal, heat units. And the human body doesn't absorb energy. It absorbs mass or matter, something real intangible. The first law of thermodynamics, which is incessantly cited to sort of bolster this fallacious viewpoint in this position, is not applicable to human beings or open thermodynamic systems. They're applicable to closed thermodynamic systems. I haven't really talked about the difference of those two systems on this channel. It's a very simple difference. Open thermodynamic systems not only allow for the flow of energy in and out of the body, such as closed systems do as well, but they also allow for the flow of matter in and out of the body in the forms of water vapor, carbon dioxide, tears, sweat, fecal matter, urine, etc, etc. So the heat equivalence principle, the first law of thermodynamics, is not applicable to human beings. The daily intake of calories of every single human being on the face of this planet is necessarily zero. Okay? Loss is mass in, mass out, not- Yes, Colt. It is mass in, mass out, not energy in, energy out. So calories in, calories out is not true or a valid concept at all. Calories in, calories out. Keto works because of the endocrine system and its impact on your hormones, not because you're in a calorie deficit. There it is. Yeah, particularly insulin and glucagon, but also testosterone and a downregulation of estrogen, which is important when you're engaging in body recomposition in a proper way with resistance training. I know the second reason why they lose weight pretty- Well, you don't even know the first reason because you got that wrong. So why would you, why would we listen to what your second reason is? Why would we listen to that? Oh, I know why. To expose you even further for the fool you are. Let's continue. Carbohydrates hold water. Yes, they also inflame the body. Because if you didn't know, glucose is the prototypical monosaccharide or sugar concerned. And glucose is a six carbon aldehyde and aldohexose. I know you're saying it in your head. Destroy lipid graphs, tear cell, cell membranes to pieces, bind, bind to DNA, 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 DNA. I know you're saying it in your head. But for the new viewers, let me go ahead and enlighten them. Aldehydes, even in vastly small concentrations, destroy lipid rafts, tear cell membranes to pieces, bind to DNA to promote carcinogenesis by causing mutations to it, and in a high enough concentration, but still relatively low, kill cells outright. Well, I don't suppose I have to say anything as trite and cliched as destroy, destroy lipid rafts, tear cell membranes to pieces. Now, that seems like a propitious approach to effectuating inflammation within the body, eating carbohydrates then, which are unnecessary in the first place. Gluconeogenesis. Say it with me, folks. Gluconeogenesis. Anyway, so yes, people do lose water weight. That's not a bad thing in many cases. That's indicated as the primary constituent of one's body mass, and it is also the most variable out of all of the others on a day-to-day -day basis, on an hour-to-hour -hour basis. 
stop eating carbs, you're really just holding less water. Uh-huh. And what's the problem with that? What's wrong with having less water attention while you burn fat? And guess what? Exactly. That's bad for lifting. Yes. No, that's not bad for lifting. What the hell are you talking about? What the hell is he talking about? Can someone enlighten me? Number on the scale has gone down, but you are dehydrated. No, that's not dehydration. You'll know when you're dehydrated. <laughs> Amazing. The blatant misrepresentation and the presentation of arrogance. Goodness me, the haughty nature. Is this what my generation has become? They learned it from the millennials. Bro, being dehydrated is a problem no matter what kind of athlete you are. Fortunately, there's a really, really easy fix to that. So, I'm gonna show you the same thing that I show all of our pro bodybuilders and all of our newbies. There you go. There you go, Colt. I like this approach of yours. Come on the channel, please. Let's have a conversation. I'd love to do that. We need to confabulate with the other members of the community in this space, the ever inchoate nascent community. So get back to me on that and we will totally have a discussion. So now to the comment. As you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and disease one may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product in doing such a thing, is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule called Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any hard health outcomes. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many other products from the Cerule company, please refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. I received this comment on a video called called The Fiverr Folks Just Won't Stop, which was a fun video to record. We got this comment from, once again, Jennifer TX Carnivore. Edward, please do a video on the world being iodine deficient. Here are my thoughts. I agree that natural iodine is depleted from our soils. Yes, as are all nutrients. But I firmly believe that this push of humans to consume large quantities of cruciferous veggies is really harming human health and has drastically caused the success of high rate of iodine deficiencies. Yes, I believe the same thing. See, the thing with cruciferous vegetables is they are particularly known for having a higher propensity to be teeming with compounds known as glucosinolates, which when reacted with certain enzymes in the digestive tract turn into isothiocyanates, which many of them happen to have the name goitrogen conferred upon them because of their propensity to cause goiter, because of their propensity to compete with iodine for absorption at the thyroid. That is definitely something I believe as well, for sure. Now, do I believe that that's invariably the case when you eat cruciferous vegetables? No, but it's something to keep in mind for anyone that actually wants to keep those included in their diet. Yet. So, everyone is told to eat lots of cruciferous veggies, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, asparagus, Brussels sprouts are named common ones, but Google cruciferous veggies and there are at least 30 of them. But cruciferous veggies block the absorption of natural iodine found in foods. Yes, particularly once again, the glucosinolates contained within. One of which is sulforaphane. It's a polyphenol. Let me just, just to make sure. Yeah, there it is. Glucoraphanin is a glucosinolate precursor. Once again, glucosinolates will react with enzymes within the stomach to form isothiocyanate. So the isothiocyanate concerned in this example is sulforaphane. The thing about sulforaphane is that it is actually used in chemotherapy, I believe. The reason for it is because of its ability to kill cancerous cells via oxidation. The problem is that sulforaphane doesn't discriminate between normal functioning cells and benign ones and cancerous ones. Sulforaphane has the ability to kill all cells via oxidation. And in chemotherapy, when you try and isolate the impact to one cell, shrapnel occurs, which is why chemotherapy, one of the reasons at least why chemotherapy is so, so, so when it comes to its efficacy and its success rate. And sulforaphane is not the only plant compound utilized like this. So just keep that in mind when people say that sulforaphane is anti-cancer. It's anti-cell. It's what it does. But anyway, everyone is told cruciferous veggies prevent cancer. Oh, there it is. If you didn't know, I haven't actually read this entire comment. I read some of it last night and I thought, well, I'm recording tomorrow, so I might as well just put this on a video since it's quite long, and I think a lot of people would benefit from the answer. But that is not true. Correct. It's sort of true, but not really in the way that people think. Every time I ask people who have any form of cancer, fibrocystic breast masses, polyps on their gender internal organs, cysts on their internal gender organs, PCOS, hormones issues, nodules on thyroid, I ask them, do you eat cruciferous veggies? And they all say yes. I have done this so many times in comment sections with carnivore interviews, and they all say yes. That could very well be the case. I mean, association doesn't necessarily mean causation, but especially when we know the mechanisms behind certain compounds, biochemically speaking, it is plausible. I do believe that. Before I switched to carnivore, I ate broccoli daily for six years with half a chicken skinless breast and a little of whole wheat noodles. In those six years, I had a buildup of fibrocystic masses in my chest. Yep. 
Then I started getting huge, very painful cysts with one as large as two inches by one inch and many smaller ones around one inch by one inch. I think it's inch, I'm not sure. I became fed up with Doc saying about breast cysts and fibrocystic breast masses. It's normal, nothing you could do. We don't know what happens. Diet does not cause it. It can turn into cancer. It's a disease that may not turn into cancer. You can't reverse it. Eat more plants, saturated fats, make it worse. All not true, correct. We are not supposed to have lymphomas. I mean, you see this with dogs now because of what we feed them. And dogs, remember, they evolved directly alongside us. So they're coming down with the same disease as we are. We are not designed, and they are not designed to have thyroid issues, have cysts everywhere. They're not supposed to, et cetera, et cetera. I started researching on my own and found out fibrocystic breast masses swell and occur due to seeking for natural iodine in the body. All organs need it. Cruciferous veggies block absorption of iodine. Yes. Saturated fats are very good for the human body. It helps heal all on carnivore diet and avoid plants. I tend to agree with that. It's our primary fuel source and it's designed to interact with our biochemical mechanisms far more appropriately and in a more indicated fashion than carbohydrates, exogenously introduced at least. I jumped right into carnivore with zero plants and sure enough, my fibrocystic masses started shrinking. Yes to be expected. I added a drop of Lugol's iodine 2% or 5% to a glass of water at the start to help build up my iodine deficiency as well. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Not that I know of. <laughs> Update on that. When I try to add Lugol's 5%, I get a little back pain, which could be my kidney saying, no thanks, don't like this. So I'm stopping the Lugol's again. I think that's actually a good idea. Eventually, when you replenish your stores of iodine or any nutrient, eventually, if you start taking it exogenously in isolation, you will probably start to get negative effects. This happens with every nutrient. Carnivore is replete with every nutrient you need for the body. So once you become replenished from that stuff, you don't really need to take the exogenous nutrient any longer. Honestly, I feel I may get enough iodine naturally from the beef I eat, and from using Redmond sea salt, being one year, six month carnivore, I assume I don't need to be taking iodine. I think that's the case. I concur. Corroborate that thought. I am not eating plants that block iodine, and my fibrocystic masses are almost completely gone. If I had that much of a deficiency, my masses would be big and still growing. I think so. That makes sense to me. I'm now one year, six months into carnivore and all my cysts have been gone and I barely have any fibrocystic masses anymore. All shrank and almost all gone. Everyone that replies to me saying that they had fibrocystic breast issues, they also, they ate cruciferous veggies too because we are told to by docs. Yeah, we're told to do a lot of things by doctors. That's why I do everything in my power to not see one. But the fact that people with any cancer also been eating cruciferous veggies isn't good and red flag that cruciferous veggies are causing all this due to blocking iodine. And broccoli alone has over 100 natural toxins in it alone besides it blocking iodine. Avoid, avoid all plants to be honest. The main one, is fiber. We need to start conceptualizing fiber as not only unnecessary, but an actual plant toxin of its own. But yes, I believe that. Anyone reading this, look up cruciferous veggies as there are at least 30 of them. Google it to see. Yeah, you listed the primary ones, Jennifer. I think kale itself is one if you didn't say that already. Kale itself is a cruciferous vegetable and also is teeming with thallium. You should look into that. All of you should look into that. That's a good one. Stay away from cruciferous veggies and all of them. Docs, please stop telling people they're good for us. That's my rant on that topic. Say no to cruciferous veggies. Go carnivore. I am carnivore for life. Another positive anecdote. N of one plus N of one plus N of one plus N of one plus N of a thousand. Really? Like. So listen to what Jennifer has to say here because she's correct. I don't normally talk about the granular, granular details only if they come up in the video I'm reacting to. A lot of it is the trite things and the banal things, but that's also why I wanted to include this comment because a lot of people have questions about certain granular things and if they don't have my book, which has a lot of granular detail in it, then it's nice to make a video about it. So by the way, speaking of the book, that was supposed to be out on March 1st, but the publishing company concerned is incompetent. We have dealt with their incompetence since the start of this processing period, which began really in July or August of 2023. The book should have been done months ago, months ago. So it should have been released months ago as well. Unfortunately, I was supposed to receive the final copy on March 1st, so it was already going to be late, and then I still didn't get it received. Anyone that has a book written, I don't think that's really many of you at all, but if you end up wanting to write a book or you already have one written and you're trying to find a publisher, never, ever, ever under any circumstance sign up and pay for the services or service of the ghostwriting club based in LA. Never, ever do it. Ever. Let's just put it that way. So we're hoping that that book actually is released by April 1st now at the latest. So I am sorry for the inconvenience. I posted something about that on Sunday and on YouTube in the community feed. Don't know if anyone saw that. So if you didn't see it, here it is on this video. With that being said, and also once again, subscribe to the Patreon, $1 a month, $5 a month, and $8 a month. If anyone doesn't know my goals on this channel or really my life goals right now, I have a severe medical condition that is ameliorable. Ameliorable? Ameliorable? I'm 
about 70% there, maybe 60%, it's hard to say, but the clinic that I receive treatments from is at least a 12 hour to 14 hour drive away. It is not feasible. We have travel fees that need to be paid for and I am indigent and poor really because of this condition. It disallows me from having an actual job that I can go to and get paid for. We are trying to garner enough money to buy a house or at least rent one really in Florida, which is where my clinic is based so that it expedites my healing processes and so that it's cheaper in terms of travel. So even $1 helps out a lot. Of course, the $5 a month tier gets you all effectively, almost all of the benefits for watching my videos. So $5 a month, I mean, that's the cost of maybe a cup of coffee, not even a month. So please go ahead and donate to that. And also, if you want to actually get even more benefit physically, you will refer to the link on the screen below, which is the Cerul link. If you want to know more about Cerul products, I highly, highly, highly recommend you check out the video that I recorded on them in which I elucidated them extensively and very, very thoroughly. If you sign up to be an independent business owner with Cerule, it's totally free to do so. If you need any help in ameliorating inflammation any further, and you've already adopted a carnivorous diet, which is the first thing that you should do, at least properly and prudently, not impetuously and cursorily, then Cerule products are what I ardently recommend that you invest in. But first, before you invest in anything, please look into those products yourself. I recommend you do that. There is also extensive detail listed in my book, Contraindicated, which once again will be released soon. A closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. I think that people will benefit from all of the knowledge within that book, but Cerule is mentioned at the end as well. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. I'm trying to get my full videos posted on Twitter eventually, just in case I get banned on YouTube, which is a very, very, very real threat. There's a very salient threat nowadays on YouTube. Also email me at edgoki14 at gmail.com if you have any questions or if you would like to recommend that I watch certain videos. I have once again a superfluous stash in my abditory on YouTube and on Instagram. However, I will put those aside to cater towards my audience, of course. So with all of that being said, join me next time when we react to someone else that doesn't understand any lick of science or wherein we're corroborating someone else that does know a lick of science. So until then. I became fed up with Doc saying... It's 8.51 in the morning. It's 8.51 in the morning.